Hey everyone, uh, so today we're going to talk about UX tools. Any tool you can actually use in one of the steps in, let's say, design thinking, the double diamond of UX, lean UX, so forth. What are the tools you can actually employ to get the best and the most out of it, especially when we talk about, let's say, collaboration, um, best design approach, best prototyping, best user testing things of that nature, what works best. And I'm gonna walk you through my picks and what I tend to use in different scenarios. And it's gonna be a full range of different tools which I apply depending on the scenario and the problem I'm trying to solve. So let's get right into it. Okay guys, so I'm gonna walk you through a typical double diamond. I think it's gonna be easiest if I have some sort of reference in a structural way. So as you can see, we have a discover, define, develop, deliver, you know, a typical double diamond Kind of like a breakdown basically research if we want to define its synthesis of the findings if you want to develop you have to ideate and come up with something new and if you want to deliver uh, you just implement and test it i kind of put in some different key steps which i think it's going to be useful to, especially for those who are new to design let's say what's con what's in the research itself and it's basically just a brief analysis research uh, in synthesis, you would have inside gathering, setting up some themes, you know, uh, putting uh, findings in clusters, identifying where the opportunities lay, uh, validating it, of course. And then you take that to ideation. Uh, you come up with some crazy ideas uh, out of this world. You try to prioritize based on technical complexity, uh, business needs, uh, user outputs, so let's say efficiency gains or things of that nature, whatever is identified before from the empathy uh, research and then you would take that to prototyping and implementation so let's say you would prototype that thing you would test it and you would iterate and so forth so as you can see it's kind of like um it gives like a real linear approach to problems it's you in real life it's usually never like that you probably would have to take a step back sometimes or a step two back and then you know forwards and stuff like that so you jump through but i'm gonna walk you through every single bit and my preferences for tools. Uh, let me just jig it up so you can actually see it. Um, what I like to use across the board, I guess it, it, some, some of the tools you just have to kind of rely on throughout the project. And that would be Trello, let's say one of them. And you could use it in, let's say, uh, managing your design team, managing the tasks, uh, creating tickets, uh, dividing into sprints, creating a chart to manage the deliverables, uh, project manage in a way, you know, design manage in a way. Um, and then we have something like a Microsoft Office, because let's say you might need to use Microsoft Word to gather requirements. Maybe requirements are given to you that way and you need to digest it. You could instead use Google tools, Google search. So for example, for brief analysis, research itself, I think those things come in hand really well as software tools, uh, because, you know, if you need to do some background research, well, what, what better there is than Google? If you need to pull up some requirements on analyzing requirements, which are given to you, what better tools are there than Microsoft Office, which is just across the board. And then we have, uh, if we go to next step, let's say to the definition and synthesis, to inside gathering themes, opportunities. I think the physical whiteboard, it's super effective, especially if you run workshops and you need to gather the insights, uh, discover pain points and things of that nature. And especially when you need to synthesize and put it into themes, nothing works better. But the digital tools I like to use here is something like the real-time board, which is the tool I'm displaying this thing on. So as you can see, it allows to put different, different post-it notes. Let's say I can just say something like, hello world. It allows you to collaborate. And that's another thing which is basically quite important when you need to talk to other people, when you need to uh, combine your findings. If you have a design team, project team, you know, what's better there is than collaboration tool where you can do it real time. And it allows you to chat, share screens, export, stuff like that. And by no means I'm affiliated with any of these tools, by the way. Um, so real-time board is, is really good because it kind of allows you to do the, these type of things in a visual way. You know, all of this is crafted from scratch, basically, in the thing. You can add icons, you can add things of that neighbor. There's a lot of built-in integrations. So it's easy. It's basically, it could take, you know, to pull all the insights, it, it could take you just 15 minutes and make like a nice board or even 
process map, do experience mapping, things of that nature. Real-time bartend, I think it's one of the best tools for that. Then Google Keep is another thing which I like to use personally, just for personal insights and uh, brain dumps. So something like to keep my own knowledge going or to take notes, to make uh, to-do lists, things of that nature, because it's easy to access from a phone if I'm, let's say, uh, traveling or commuting and I have new idea or new insight on, on a project I'm working on. It's just really easy to not jot it down. And same applies for Evernote. I think um, it depends what sort of person you are. It could be even Apple Notes, you know, any note software comes in hand, then you synthesizing it because you have so much, much material which you find out from the research. And now you need to kind of like converge it all into the next step where you synthesize and understand the underlying themes uh, to the opportunities. I mean, you need some sort of tool to digest. Uh, some things which are basically you can share with your teammates are just, you know, outstanding. The next one, ideation prioritization. I didn't really put any tools here uh, because I think all the other tools, Google Suite, um, um, Microsoft Suite, uh, real-time board, Google Keep, things of that nature. The simple, basic tools is, is, is I think, what, what makes it uh, best here. It's, it really doesn't matter like how you style it, if it's pretty, if it's not, it has to be effective. And now jumping into prototype testing and iteration, that's the most fun bit. I clustered the things in a couple of groups, I have visual design tools I love to use. And I find like, you know, outstanding. There are some prototyping tools and user testing tools. Now, why didn't I include something for wireframing? Well, I think wireframing can be done in anything like let's say Sketch, Axure are brilliant tools for that. There are other tools like Balsamic and things of that nature. It could be done in any graphical editor. You know, the more easy, the better, uh, the more integrated with other things, the better, the more you can transfer to a next stage, which is visual design, the better, uh, the more easy you can test, also the better. And that's why I steer towards Axure um, as a go-to UX tool all-rounder, um, because, I mean, uh, whatever developer could do in HTML, CSS, JavaScript, you can do it there. Whatever you can wireframe, you can do it there. It's, it's I, I think, unmatched tool. Um, but if we, after that, after let's say you are done with low fidelity, high fidelity wireframes, you're, you have it sign off, you have some sort of internal or external validation from client or peers, um, you would of course take it to a visual level. And I think what matters here is whatever tool you like to use, uh, because some people prefer Photoshop, some people prefer Sketch, uh, some prefer Figma, which is, you know, brilliant for collaboration online. Um, and I also added, let's say, noun project, which is icon. Uh, icon depository where you can just you know download different icons and I, I kind of experienced from observation working with other designers that um, others love it too and uh, it just because it's easy it's quite wide known you know if, if let's say you ever want to change jobs you if you adapt to one of these tools you're gonna be good because you can learn new tools on top of that uh, same knowledge because they're basically doing the same thing just with extra niceness um, and let's say Figma is outstanding from Photoshop and Sketch because it's uh, it's collaboration and you can do it online on any device uh, be it Windows or Mac uh, Photoshop is you know it's just like a granddad of, of a visual software um, and, and among designers it has been labeled either good or bad it's quite expensive and then Sketch is a cheap scalable graphics processing tool you can actually do a lot of it and you know you can produce it i think it's the best for product design um so going next so let's say if you're done with a visual design using those tools what would happen next you would need to prototype um the easiest one for low fidelity uh prototypes i think is envision um to me it's it's way too limited however it's good to just give like a general idea of a flows to let's say stakeholders or you know test it on users or you know kind of gather like that initial input uh, adobe xd is again it's kind of like a hybrid between sketch and envision i wouldn't really necessarily go for that in prototyping myself i think it's a great tool but it's still in a growing state and um, it it lacks a lot of um, kind of like fundamental features so um Next, we have Axure, of course, and Axure, you know, you can prototype, you can wireframe, you can make it clickable, you can add logic, 
you can capture data inputs, you can kind of make a website from drag and drop elements. From get go, you can achieve a lot just from the out of the box. And lastly, we have principal app and principal app is to, to make um, really quick and, and kind of like simple UI transitions. If you know one of those uh, dribble or behance animated nice layouts where you have a mobile phone and you know a screen just flicks through and you have fancy animations and just looks amazing. It's, it's my go to to kind of animate and prototype the micro interactions basically. But again, it depends what you're looking for. If you're working with business analysts, if you have a prototype which has to contain 200 pages, if 100 states actually is the way to go. If it's just a mobile app with, let's say, five screens, like in that experience journey, then you can use Envision. If it's if you're if you want to save on Sketch and Envision, just get XD and do both. But again, with, with a caveat that it's a bit limited. And principle is like that icing on the cake where you have a niceness and and making those smooth transitions, demos, stuff like that, just to wow uh, your peers and and of course a client. And now, if you you are gonna be prototyping all those things, you kind of need to test it somehow, right? So some of my favorite things, how I like to test it on users is Camtasia, for example. Um, it's especially well done if you do like a usability study on your things and you need to record their face. Of course, if you have a permission and their voice and interactions, it's perfect because you can always rewatch it or give it to your, um, let's say, client or, or other project team peers where you can re review and get some output out of it. Then we have Lookback, which is uh, my go-to personally tool. Um, which integrates with any prototyping tool. It's whatever the person sees on their, let's say, browser or their mobile phone as an app, let's say, Envision prototype, you can capture. And you can also capture your face, trends and sounds and stuff like that and look back again. Always use it at any stage, you know, when you need validation and user input on, um, you know, the state you're at. And lastly, it's recorded, which I use with developers, let's say. So if I need to communicate some sort of micro interaction, I don't have enough time to make it nice in principle. I, ju I would just use record it. It's basically like a widget you would attach in your toolbar. You click on it, you select the area and it produces you a GIF of, let's say, what you do on your screen. So it's just to communicate micro interactions pretty well. And especially if, let's say, uh, you have some sort of um, I don't know, you, you work with people abroad and your developer team is, let's say, in India, which, which I've experienced where we had to communicate, you know, how to implement certain flow and certain feature and certain inter interaction pattern. That was brilliant because I could just um, quickly make it an actual. I didn't have to send the prototype or a link to them and explain where we have to go to find that thing. I could just literally grab the part of the screen, make it a GIF in, you know, 200 kilobytes, attach it to an email, and we know exactly what I mean. So that was perfect for communications. And that's what I use for user testing. If I'm doing user testing on my own, it's either Contagia, look back and record it because, um, you know, you can always record what users are doing that way and produce some sort of output which you can analyze and iterate later on. That's the main bit. And next steps would probably be sending it to the production. Um, so my favorite tools to go to for that is uh, Zeppelin, of course. And Zeppelin basically takes your sketch. Uh, if you designed, let's say, visual mockups in sketch and you have a prototype on the side, it's really easy just to set the prototype link in an email and say, here is also Zeppelin invite, go and produce everything else because Zeppelin allows Windows and Mac developers to simply select different items uh, and, and it produces style guides for them, colors, typography, icons we have to use and it's really easy to export. Um, and in my personal experience, that's the most effective tool ever. It's really simple. Um, uh, and but it's it saves so much time in communication that right? you don't really have to hold developers hand and coach them from how it has to be implemented because you can just publish it to Zeppelin plugin and it's there for them to see and they get notified whatever changes you make. Um, then I included Hemingway app, which is basically a writing app because uh, throughout the process, I guess you could use it, uh, but it's basically a grammar 
uh, checker and an app which basically uh, checks your grammar and how you like you know you write the copy so let's say if you write a proposal if you write presentation because you're probably gonna need to find uh, to write you know style guides to actually work on a copy whatever output you produce be it a powerpoint be it uh, a report or some sort of other things because you might let's say need to pass it to other designers or your client if you're a, a working in an agency you need to communicate what you did so that let's say if you you're not able to do a sprint too and maybe your colleagues jump in they can actually read and understand what's going on because you know gibberish is not gonna work and especially if you're charging for it and so you supply the documents to your client so Hemingway is like a really simple Mac app which you know uh, checks your grammar uh, checks for improvements and highlights things um, and next of course is Dropbox so you know you need to back up you need to store a file somewhere you need to somehow share it and especially if you let's say have a team of members and you need to share the documents really quickly so be it you know Photoshop files sketch files prototype files I mean just Dropbox is king um, unless you have something else like a, a locally located NAS or, or uh, other drives you can just share or you know um, anything but USB sticks really so yeah these are the tools I prefer to use and recommend to use to others in the UX process that I would just recommend to especially starter designers or midway designers do not bog, get bogged down on tools too much and which tool you use you let's say Photoshop or sketch it doesn't really matter um, it's whatever your developers more like to digest it whatever you're quickest to prototype and make something get test on the users that's what matters most it's just preference it doesn't matter what you put on the resume what job quali qualifications say that you need Photoshop you need sketch you need envision it, all that crap you can learn as long as you have one tool knowledge and as long as you know what you want to achieve and you have a good idea of how to let's say design you can just use any tool and to be honest i could just design a website in the world if i would need to so um, don't get bogged down pick the right tool for the right scenario and i hope this video is useful did you like this video if so give a like subscribe or share with your friends show some love